What's going on everyone? Uh, today I want to talk about my first year in the FGC. Uh, I started playing back in October of 2019. So it's been a little bit over a year, but I didn't start the YouTube channel till you know, like October 30th. So I kind of missed <laughs> missed my shot, so I want to make up for it now. I didn't really know what gameplay to put in the background, so I don't think I'm going to put any at all. I'm just going to put me uh, pacing back and forth, because I think I think best that way. <laughs> and I sort of have a loose script here that I'm going to follow. And uh, I, I just want to really get out there what it's like being a new person who hasn't played any fighting games. Uh, and, and a year later, right? The FGC is a lot older than other communities, and I think a lot of people have a lot of many different experiences because some people started in the arcade era, some people started on Street Fighter 4, and I started in Street Fighter 5 uh, and, and Tekken 7, you know, that era. So first thing that I learned was the importance of finding my locals, right? And finding my community because it, it keeps me playing, right? It kept me playing because I want to catch up to my friends and people that are better than me. And I want to place well, right? I want the teachings of people from my locals to show progress. Um, it keeps me motivated to keep learning the game and keep playing. Um, maybe not a specific game, but to keep learning about fighting games in general, because I think the skill carries over really well between titles. And I'll get into that in a minute here. Um, and I, it's a very good way to learn, right? Playing offline, obviously you can't really do that right now. Um, but it is a good way to learn because you'll run into players that are a lot stronger than you that know your mistakes and have probably gone through what you've gone through and can really speed up the process. For example, um, I've only I only have like five or six hundred hours on Street Fighter Five on Steam, which is not a lot uh, in comparison to some other people that I have on my friends list. But I'm still up there in the ranks with them because your learning is very much supplemented by offline. Uh, when when you could play offline, and by the accelerated progress from people teaching you uh, that that are a lot better than you. Anyways, something some things that I learned about myself that I hope you can relate to, um, or maybe you did relate to. I learned that I can really put forth the effort, and I can learn the game. I I a lot of people don't know this, but I actually purchased Street Fighter Five when it came out in 2016. And <laughs> I really wanted to play Bison. Uh, I watched Tampa Bison a lot. I watched his stream a lot. And I think I watched a tournament where he was there. And I was like, that looks sick. I want to try that. I want to play that character. I picked up the game. I couldn't do a charge in motion. And I returned it the next day. And I didn't buy it again until till the end of 2019. <laughs> For like three or four years, I didn't even bother. I, I completely got rid of it and kept playing COD. Uh, which I really wish I didn't. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be so far behind uh, a lot of people right now. Um, and then I wanted to just show, I've, I've been documenting my tournament placements that were decent. Obviously, when offline was around, I think I clocked about 9 or 10 events, and I went 0-2 at every single event. So offline right now, I'm like 0-18, like 0-20. And, um, and obviously, that's, uh, I don't know if that's normal, but for me, I'm okay with that. Because the people I'm losing, it's the same people I'm losing to every time, and they're all, you know, veterans of the game. But every time I got a, a little better, right? Because you go there, play in the tournament, go to, but then you stay and play casuals. and That's where you really improve, I think. So let's just take a quick look. Uh, so in the Rivals League, this was in Grand Blue. Now I'm really sad that Grand Blue sort of, I don't want to say died because it's not dead, but it's a lot smaller than it was when it launched. Um, because that game fit my play style very well, right? A lot of patient play and heavy neutral. Um, and that was the first tournament I ever really placed. And I got 5th out of, like, 16. Um, and then River City Rollback. This is a Street Fighter V tournament um, back in September of 2020. And I got ninth. I lost to Doc. I lost to uh, Dr. African. And then this was the Houston Fight Night Exhibition, and I beat uh, Meyer Park 5-1. Those are my only achievements in the past year. So hopefully I'll keep, I'll keep that document running, and hopefully, you know, we can, we can make it a little better. Let me go ahead and switch back. I leaked my <laughs> leaked my little script right there. Um, so yeah, and and I wanted to make it very clear to people who are watching this who don't know if they should start playing fighting games, uh, that just because someone's played more than you or longer than you doesn't mean you can't catch up to them or surpass them. Uh, and that's something that you'll find out very quickly is that everybody learns at a different pace, and 
Uh, me, for example, if I put in a lot of effort uh, when, when I was going to the offline events, especially, to really learn, and then when COVID hit, I had so much extra time to, uh, you know, sit up my setup and play a lot, so uh, it, it really accelerated my learning, and I was able to catch up to some people that I wasn't able to beat months prior. Uh, so, yeah. Um, also, I learned that I get very angry when I only have myself to blame. Uh, I find it really hard to stay motivated after I lose. And I abandon the improvement mindset very quickly when I get tilted. The improvement mindset is the mindset that you go into ranked to improve, not to get a rank, not to get LP or, you know, get numbers, right? Not to get the online points that CFN gives you or whatever your respective title is. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm trying to work on that. I've mentioned that a few times in these videos, but it's definitely an issue that I hope to overcome. Um, and then playing for points is a real detriment to growth. That sort of goes hand in hand with the last point. But playing for points, in in my opinion, is you are getting on the game and you're saying, uh, today I'm going to hit diamond. And when you lose, you can clearly see that goal getting further and further away and it, it frustrates you. So to play for points is to um, sort of abandon the growth mindset and just you know play for a number that CFN is generating for you. So that, that's really terrible and something that I have to overcome. Uh, and to the extent I'm getting to the point where I, I don't really care about it anymore, but obviously losing is not fun. <laughs> and and I think I've been playing a lot of DBFC lately, and that game, it's really not fun to lose because you don't get to play if you lose. You get to hold that block string. You get to hold that <laughs> touch of death. I got touch of death in a casual. I, I could probably uh, find that clip and upload it, but, oh, man, that game is unforgiving sometimes. Anyways, uh, next point is I quit once I start getting decent because I don't want to try hard and really put in the brain power it takes to win, and I'd like to work on that so I can progress. This is happening right now as we speak because I have switched to DBFC and been playing for the past two days like obscene amounts of hours, right? I've been playing that game from like 4 p.m. to like 6 a.m. or something crazy. And it's because it's fun to just press buttons and not understand the game sometimes. I'm winning, right? I'm winning a lot. And it's not because I know the game. It's because I just know a little, a little bit more than the people that I'm playing because I've played other fighting games at this point. And I know how universal mechanics work. Like whiff punishing and, and you know, just punishing moves in general, right? Unsafe moves. Uh, and I'm, I'm probably, I think I'm like 250,000 BP or whatever whatever the, the point system is in there. And I think I'm going to start meeting people who understand the game a lot more than me. And, and it's not going to be fun anymore. And I'm going to want to have, or I'm going to have to put in the effort to get good. And then I'll start wanting to go back to Street Fighter. I, I know myself very well in that aspect. And it's something that I struggle with. Uh, and then the next point I had was fighting games are great because even if you were to drop one game for another, uh, for another title. So if I were to stop playing Street Fighter completely and switch to DBFC, um, the skill carries over fairly well, so that makes that fickle nature of mine where I sort of give up on a title and go to the next one a little more bearable, right? However, I would, I would like to find a game and stick with it, and I'm really hoping that that's going to be Guilty Gear Strive in a couple months because I'm really looking forward to that game. And the rollback, I hope it's... I cross my fingers, I hope it's really good and, and super playable so you can play with, you know, coast to coast and all that. Uh, I hope that game can really unite the coast and have a big player base because I think that's something that really every other fighting game has done a terrible job of doing. I think it's it's insane to me that in 2020, well 2021 now, um, you can't play coast to coast on a AAA title besides MK11. And I, I'm not a big NRS fan. I don't, I don't really like how the game feels. But I do get on that game sometimes just to play good online because it's tilting to play delay based DVFZ or whatever type of Frankenstein netcode <laughs> rollback SF5 has. Um, but yeah, SF5 really started off as a stepping stone for me, and I wanted to get into the game and get decent at fighting games before Project L came out, because I was a big League of Legends fan. I still play the game casually, but not... Uh, Street Fighter V, it, it's pretty funny, because Street Fighter V has really become my main title, and, and League of Legends is sort of on the back burner. I don't really play anymore. Um, and I ended up loving the competition and the people around the scene that I completely forgot about the whole Project L thing and con uh, continued to pursue Street Fighter V competitively. Um, and since I started with Street Fighter V, I've, and I've only really played that game 
I, I've recently been branching out into some other things that I missed out on, like like Dragon Ball, um, and MK11 to an extent. Uh, and I, I think I've found what I really like about fighting games rather than what I chose to like from what Street Fighter V offered to me. And I put DBFC here in parentheses because that game is is great in the fact that if you don't want to play online that day, you can go in the lab and spend hours in the lab just doing combos or, or finding out optimal combos for your character, or practicing execution. While in Street Fighter V, you open a YouTube video of a tournament, watch it for 10 minutes, find the bread and butter combo, go into training mode, and you can do it, right? You can do that combo in 10 minutes. There's not, probably Monat. Monat is probably the only character you can't go into training mode and do her bread and butter within 10 minutes because she's kind of, she's a little harder on execution. And the charge characters for me, right? Because I'm not used to charge motions. But most motion characters, I can do their bread and butter within 10 minutes. And then you're, in, you're into online. Um, that obviously makes the game more accessible, but uh, it sort of ruins the the fun factor for me. Like I, I really enjoy doing the different combos in, in Dragon Ball and watching pro players do combos that I've never seen before. So yeah, I think I think I've I've found some things that I really like and dislike um, by switching to, between these two games recently. Uh, and then what I've learned about the scene is that fighting games aren't really as popular as other genres. But when the FGC sort of bands together, it, it's something pretty. Uh, spectacular, right? I, I've watched a ton of documentaries uh, about the FGC, you know, the history of it, um, the legacies, and and about Evo moments and everything, right? I'm I'm really deep into that stuff. If if I'm uh, serious about something, I want to know everything about it, um, not just the games, but the people, right? So uh, I I really took an effort to watch everything I can about the scene, about my local scene too, right? There's there's players who don't even know me from our local scene, but I know about them. I watch their replays or I watch uh, old locals that, from before I even played the game, right? Just because I want to know how they play uh, and know about them. So, uh, yeah. And then I, I put here legacy is important in the FTC, and that's why players like Jay Wong and Daigo are, are still relevant and studied by new players such as myself. And I think that's really rare because other esports genres are, are pretty new, right? Except for, I, I would say, RTS. Like StarCraft has some pretty big legacies. But MOBAs and Counter Strike to an extent is, is pretty old too. There, there's some legends in that game. But MOBAs are a pretty new and huge esport that I think we'll see legacies like Fakers, um, you know, for years and years to come. But the fighting game genre has been around for so long that there, there's legacies that are older than me, right? 22. There's games that people still play that are older than me. <laughs> so I think that's really awesome. Um, and no matter how good you are at a game, uh, I like that the FGC still holds players to a standard when they slip up, and, and results don't really matter when you're not a, a good person, right? Um, cancel culture is is a big thing, um, and obviously I don't agree with with some of the stuff that people get you know canceled for sometimes, but there there are some terrible things that people do, and and they get called out for it, and I think that it's good to hold people to a standard, and to hold your community to a standard. Um, and that that's something I like to see. It's it's not, you know, we're we're not taking people's results and saying, oh well, this guy won Evo or this guy won X tournament and major, so let, let's let it slide. We we hold people accountable for that. Um, I think the scene is very inclusive, and it's it's willing to help new players learn a lot of the time. Inclusive in in the people that it, it chooses to accept, and um, obviously trying to grow the community as a whole by, by accepting new players such as myself and teaching them and bringing them up to speed. Uh, and then some uh, uh, last two points I have here. FGC content is growing. Uh, DBFC and MK11 are huge. Um, SF5 is getting there, right? I think Punk and, and Brian F and probably a few others that I, I'm not remembering right now at the top of my head are sort of growing it out. But DBFC is really big. Like You guys saw the, the Dota Doi video I made. Um, and, and like Hook and a bunch of those creators, that game is, is able to sustain a couple hundred thousand subscriber channels because I think the IP, right, Dragon Ball is really big. So even if you don't play the game, um, you can still relate to the content. And that, that's pretty cool. MK11 is huge because the entire audience is North American pretty much, right? This, this game doesn't exist in Asia or, or in Korea, you know, Japan. Those two really is what I mean when I say Asia. Um, because you know the violence and it's very grotesque, 
but in in North America, the the game has sold like four to five million copies at this point, and they're all in North America. So all of these English content creators are getting that entire audience, while DBFC and SF5 have to split with you know um, the Japanese audience, and uh, that that sort of creates that language barrier. That's why uh, FGC Translated is so big here in the U.S. Right? He's a pretty big channel by FGC standards because he's sort of bridging that gap. Um, and then I put here, uh, I hope that 2021 will be a great year for the FGC. Well, I, th I think that it will be a great year for the FGC because of Guilty Gear Strive, uh, KOF, and then the, the Dungeon Fighter Online game. As well as, I think we might get some Project L news, hopefully. It, I, I saw a post that was talking about Riot's game release schedule since Valorant has been every 90 days. So, so, Val so the card game came out, uh, 90 days later Valorant came out. 90 days after that, I think Wild Rift was supposed to come out, or another Riot game I'm forgetting, and then another 90 days might be the Ruined King single player, and then hopefully soon we'll hear about maybe the RPG or the... I'm hoping for the fighting game, I know a lot of people are excited about the RPG too. But yeah, that that's my year in the FGC, and hopefully next year I can uh, make another one, and my little document i have here with all my <laughs> tournament results will be you know all the way down guilty gear strive uh and i won't end up back on street fighter 5 because guilty gear didn't live up to the hype that listen if strive doesn't live up to the hype and the game dies off i don't know what i'm gonna do i'm banking on that game being very good because i'm very excited for it and i'm looking to uh you know move on from street fighter 5 anyways thank you guys um who have supported me along this journey and I hope you continue to support me. If you enjoyed, uh, or if you have um, anything that you'd like to say about your experience in the FGC, please leave in the comments below and consider subscribing. Thank you and have a great day.